Have you ever had a time where you read a book, but you were just too immature to understand its true wisdom? Thus, you threw it under the bed, only to realize decades later that the true path to wealth was there all along collecting dust? Well, this book, The Richest Man in Babylon, is that book for me. I picked it up over two decades ago because someone told me I needed to read it if I wanted to get rich. But to be honest, at the time, it all went over my head. Too many thigh shells and thigh shits for me to really appreciate its meaning. But there is a reason why this book, written close to 100 years ago in 1926, is still considered a personal finance classic today. So in the spirit of my stupidity, let's review the 10 money lessons from this timeless classic. And hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. My number one lesson from the richest man in Babylon. Don't be shy about seeking wealth. The honest truth is that many people never achieve a serious amount of wealth because first, they don't seek it. If you want to build wealth, you want to focus on it and commit to building wealth. The book set in ancient Babylon follows the story of Arkad, the richest man in Babylon, imparting his wisdom to the next generation who wishes to become wealthy. When asked by his friends how Arkad became so rich, he's quite blunt. He talks unapologetically about how he desired wealth. In my youth, I looked about me and saw all the good things that were to bring happiness and contentment. And I realized that wealth increased the potency of all these. Wealth is power. With wealth, many things are possible. One may ornament a home with the richest of furnishings. One may sail the distant seas. One may feast on the delicacies of far lands. We may not all want to sail to distant seas and feast on foreign delicacies, but we all have desires. Let's not obsess about money because that also is not a healthy place to be at. But don't hide from it. Money plays an important role in helping us to navigate this complex world and enables us to make many of our desires come true. But it will not just magically fall in our laps. We won't acquire unless we seek it actively. I found the road to wealth when I decided that a part of all I learned was mine to keep. My number two lesson from the richest man in Babylon. If you want to build wealth, be serious about investing in yourself. The more of wisdom we know, the more we may earn. The man who seeks to learn more of his craft shall be richly rewarded. If you want to build wealth, you have to continuously invest in yourself. Learn and grow. It is said that Warren Buffett spends 80% of his working day dedicated to reading. When Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and Tesla, was asked how he learned to build rockets, he said this. Simple, I read books. Charlie Munger, the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, with a net worth of approximately $2.5 billion, joked that he read so much, his children think he's a book with a couple of legs sticking out. At the end of the day, if we want to earn more, we need to master our craft, improve our skills, and maximize our capacity. And that all begins with self-improvement and self-investment. For me, this hits close to home because despite how frugal I may be in many things, I'm actually quite liberal when it comes to spending money on my education. If there's a book that sparks my interest, I really don't think twice before buying it. If there's a conference that really interests me, as long as there is no scheduling conflict, I'm all for attending. And when we look at things from an investment perspective, we're actually the best example of seeing an immediate return on investment. When we invest in our health, we have more energy to increase our capacity at work, thus yielding more income. When we invest in our skills, we get better at what we do so we can charge more in the marketplace. In the book, during Arquette's early job as a scribe, he noticed that other scribes who could write tablets faster made more money. So he became diligent about improving his own productivity by learning better writing techniques from others. Therefore, cultivate thy own powers to study and become wiser, to become more skillful, to act as to respect thyself. Number three lesson from the richest man in Babylon, act. Act on the knowledge you gain through self-investment. When Arkid was a young and a humble scribe, he had the opportunity to meet with a very wealthy businessman named Argamish. Arkid wanted to learn from this man the secret of creating and keeping wealth. So despite being intimidated, he struck a deal with Algamesh. Algamesh had a very demanding business request. A copy of a certain law carved into two clay tablets in less than 24 hours. A difficult task even for the best scribes. But Arkid was not intimidated. He said he could complete Algamesh's request if he could tell him how he can become rich. Impressed by Arkid's courage as well as his persistence, Algamesh gave his word. So Arkid met his end of the bargain despite the tight deadline. He kept working well into the early hours of the morning. It didn't matter that he was exhausted, or his back began to hurt, or that his eyes began to water, or his head began to ache. He worked until his work was complete, and as agreed upon, he received the information that he requested. The secret principle to building wealth. So this is what you need to do to get what you want. You need to invest your time wisely in making sure you get the knowledge you need, and then act. I've met a lot of very successful and wealthy individuals in my life. And what's so interesting about many of these individuals is that the characteristics that we think make someone successful aren't what we think they are. I used to think it was because they were better looking, eloquent speakers, or just smarter. Some have those traits, but many of them actually don't. The common trait among the wealthy is actually their orientation towards action. When they had an idea, they didn't stand on the sideline, they acted. Thus, they learned quickly and were able to make far further progress than someone who would be stuck in analysis paralysis. So act. As the famous Nike ad would say, just do it. Number four lesson from the richest man in Babylon. Get good advice. Counsel with wise men. Seek advice of men whose daily work is handling money. 
Most often when we desire to build wealth, we ask advice from the wrong people. We ask our friends who have no real experience with money. We ask our parents, though having best intentions, may not have done well with their own finances. Arkad made his fair share of money mistakes because he listened to the counsel from the wrong people. The first year, he managed to save 10% of his monthly income as Agamash's advice, but he made a foolish investment decision. He gave all the money he had saved to a brickmaster named Asmur. I have given it to Asmur, the brickmaster who told me he was traveling over the far seas and in Tyre, who would buy for me rare jewels of the Phoenicians. When he returns, we shall sell those at high prices and divide the earnings. The plan was for Arkad to invest his money and Asmur to buy rare jewels from Phoenician traders. And the two of them would sell those jewels in Babylon for a profit. However, Algamesh knew as soon as he heard this that this will be a failed venture for one simple reason. Neither Asmur nor Arkad had any knowledge about jewels. They wouldn't know a rare and valuable jewel if they were holding it in their hands. Advice is one thing that is freely given away, but watch that you take only what is worth having. He who takes advice about his saving from one who is inexperienced about such matters shall pay with high savings for proving the falsity of their opinions. Everyone has opinion about everything. It is our job to discover what is true and what is false. If we want advice, we should seek wise counsel. In the spirit of good advice, I'll be opening up my money coaching slash consulting session for a limited time, essentially where you can connect with me directly and ask me any money questions you might have. If you're interested, please go to my website and sign up for my newsletter by downloading my 10-step guide to securing your family's financial future. Not not only do you get a great free resource for your financial journey, but you'll be the first to know regarding my services. I'll have a link in the description below. Number 5 Lesson from the Richest Man in Babylon Don't just work for money, make money work for you. Wealth, like a tree, grows from a tiny seed. The first copper you save is the seed from which your tree of wealth shall grow. The sooner you plant that seed, the sooner shall the tree grow. And the more faithfully you nourish and water that tree with consistent savings, the sooner may you bask in the contentment beneath its shade. The honest truth is that if we don't have money working for us, we'll never really grow our wealth. Even if we have good income, frugal habits, and a decent savings rate, if we aren't investing our money to grow and compound, it won't get to a point where we'll have enough to retire. Let's do the math. Let's say you make a really good income of $100,000 a year, and you save 10% a year. $10,000 just as Algamish recommended. And you do this for 30 years. After 30 years of hard work and hard savings, you'll have a whopping $300,000. Not a small amount, but not a life-changing amount. But let's say you decide to invest your 10% of $100,000 into an investment with an average annual return of 8% a year, and you did this for 30 years. Guess how much you'll have? Over $1.1 million. Now, it's not going to make you into a billionaire, but you can retire with this number. Now, back in Arkad's days, a good investment might have been lending gold to a reliable business owner who would pay you back with interest. Well, today, we have something even better broad market low-cost index funds. For the past century, the market had an average annualized return of slightly over 10%. If you invest a percentage of the money you make in your day job into the market, your money will work harder than you ever could because eventually, compounding will take over. Money in the market doesn't take any time off. Money in the market doesn't get sick. And the money in the market doesn't get the itch to quit its job to start a YouTube channel. Then learn to make your treasure work for you. Make it your slave. Make its children and children's children work for you. Number six lesson from the richest man in Babylon. Pay yourself first. A part of all I earn is mine to keep. This was the first wealth lesson that Algamesh, Alka's mentor, taught him. And he went on to even specify the amount. A part of all you earn is yours to keep. It should not be less than a tenth of no matter how little you earn. It can be as much more as you can afford. When we talk about growing our net worth, people clamor all over the latest sexy investments, tools, and hype. However, the first step should always be saving. How much are we keeping in our pocket? Because it doesn't matter if we have the greatest investment opportunity right in our face if we don't have the money to take advantage of it. Money that we have because we decide to pay ourselves first. If you can do more than 10%, even better. But you might be saying, I have so many expenses, I just can't save 10% in my current budget. What can I do? Well, this is where the next lesson comes in. My number seven lesson from the richest man in Babylon. Understand what real necessary expense means. Its definition is quite malleable. In the book, students of Arkad ask exactly the same question. How can a man keep one-tenth of all he earns in his purse when all the coins he earns are not enough for his necessary expenses? This is how Arkad responded to their complaints. Necessary expenses will always grow to equal our incomes unless we protest to the contrary. Confuse not the necessary expenses with thy desires. Each of you, together with your good families, have more desires than your earnings can gratify. Essentially, we often confuse our needs with our desires. How often do we say, I need this for my life? I can't live without it. And we spend more than we intend to. The other day, I was watching some travel vloggers and went down a rabbit hole of GoPro cameras they were using to film. And before you know it, I was telling my wife, I need a GoPro. You know, for my YouTube channel. I need it in order to do my job. Yes, I know, I sit in front of a computer all day to film, but you never know when I might be diving off a cliff or surfing in a shark-infested water. And without a GoPro, how can I film that epic shot? She only had to give me a look to make me realize what I was doing. Would I get a GoPro in the near future? Maybe. You'll be the first one to know. Confuse not the necessary expenses with thy desires. Number 8 Lesson from the Richest Man in Babylon 
Avoid risk investments. Gold slipped away from the man who invested in business or purposes with which he is not familiar or which are not approved by those skilled in his keep. Arquette tells a Babylonian tradition that sons of wealthy parents must earn the right to inherit the estate of the parents. Therefore, he gave his son a bag of gold and a clay tablet carved with the five laws of gold. He told his son to come back in 10 years and give his father an account of how he did. If he was worthy, he would inherit the estate. 10 years later, his son came back to tell his father he handled the gold poorly and lost it all. He had gotten involved with horse racing despite not knowing anything about horses. He told me in confidence that in Nineveh, there was a wealthy man who owned a horse so swift that it had never been beaten. He didn't realize that these were actually crooks seeking a new victim. Later, I discovered that this was a deceitful plan of these men and they constantly journeyed with caravans seeking victims. I know we must be looking at Arkea's son and thinking, what a fool. He should have known better. But how many of us can easily fall into the same trap because of greed and ignorance? Maybe not to the degree in which Arkea's son fell into, but we all have to a certain extent. I mean, I sure have. A few years ago, after having watched Arnold Schwarzenegger's Pumping Iron, a 1977 documentary about the world of professional bodybuilding, I got super motivated to start lifting more weights. So I started looking around online for good courses. Man, if you thought the online world of fast money investing was shady, you should check out the health and fitness industry. Being naive about what program will be most effective for me, I got sucked into false promises that a lot of these programs were making and spent way more money than I should have. And you can tell by my physique, it didn't work. I unfortunately wasn't able to achieve my dream of becoming Mr. Olympia like Arnold Schwarzenegger. If something sounds too good to be true, it likely is. Let's build up our financial knowledge and avoid risky investments. Or in my case, fitness knowledge. Number 9 lesson from the richest man in Babylon. By protection. Old Banzer was a grim warrior whose job was to defend the city of Babylon against attacking armies. There was a time when the main army of Babylon were far away in the east and the mighty armies of the Assyrians decided to attack. For several nights and days, Banzer and a handful of defenders stood on top of the ancient walls of Babylon and fought off the attackers. The citizens were scared and terrified, but Banzer was not. He wasn't because he knew the walls would hold. It was built high and strong over a hundred years ago and had never been broken through. Upon the fifth night of the fourth week, the clamor without diminished. The first streak of daylight illuminating the plains disclosed great clouds of dust raised by the retreating armies. Because Babylon had invested in building a mighty and strong wall, it was able to withstand an attack even when its mighty army was away. It was fully protected. In the same way, we need to protect ourselves. Behind the impregnable walls of fully funded emergency fund, good spending habits, and solid insurance. Good insurances like health insurance, auto insurance, life insurance, and homeowner insurance. Don't let your city be unprotected. At the end of the day, we cannot afford to be without adequate protection. Number 10 lesson from the richest man in Babylon. Despite all the talks about the importance of money, remember what is most important, your life. Enjoy life while you're here. Saving, investing, and being responsible with our money is important, but it should never be the end goal of our lives. It is a tool to enable us to live a life that we want, but it shouldn't be the center of our life. Life is good, and life is rich with things worthwhile and things to enjoy. Thank you guys for watching. In the spirit of enjoyment, if you'd like to learn more about how to spend your money to maximize happiness, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best. Oh,